Hello, thank you very much for your company here on Jaw News at 8. My name is Evans Mensa and I'm here with... Kemini Nyamani Amano. Now coming up over the next hour, Ghana Integrity Initiative indicts the National Democratic Congress of votes buying and abuse of incumbency. Also, tonight's election 2012 fever to peak as Nana Adodankwa Akufado kickstarts 2012 campaign promising the MPP is the best alternative. Out of the December polls, President of the National House of Chiefs and now Professor John Nabila urges chiefs to be bold and address issues that threaten peace in the country. In business, we gauge the awareness of the public about the introduction of the new 50 city note. Now also up in entertainment, Hip Life Group 2, Tough, blame their long absence from the music industry and corruption. We'll find out why. In our first story, the Ghana Integrity Initiative, GRI, is accusing government of abusing its incumbency. As far as the campaign for the 2012 elections is concerned, the civil society group urged that government officials are engaged in vote buying and also using their positions to compel people to support the party. The Ghana Integrity Initiative, in its latest monitoring reports of political parties in the country, between May and June this year, cites NDC for abuse of incumbency. In the report, government officials were also faulted for claiming credit for projects undertaken with a district assembly's common fund. They were also accused for using public space and facilities other political parties would ordinarily not have access to in furtherance to their partisan political objectives. The Bronga Hafo, Volta, Western, Easting and Central Regions where the regions where abuses of incumbency were high. And I'm delighted to say we're joined right now by the Executive Director of the Ghana Integrity Initiative, Vitus Azim. Thank you very much sir, for your time here on Join News at 8. So how did you come by these pretty damning conclusions? Well, let me start by saying that it is a coalition of uh, suicide organizations comprising Ghana Integrity Initiative, Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition, and the Ghana City Center for Devo Democratic Development. So it's not just GII, but it's these two organizations. Now, with the last how we came by this, we recruited 30 observers uh, from uh, for 30 constituencies selected across the country, gave them some training on indicators of abuse of incumbency and electoral corruption for two days, we train them for two days before sending them back to their constituencies to observe and report instances of abuse of incumbency and electoral corruption. And yes, they report to us on a weekly basis and it's based on these weekly reports that we came out with this uh, consolidated report, the third report. And you mentioned some specific names in there, some government officials. For example, uh, one of the ministers named in your report is Imano Amakofibwa, who is a deputy energy minister. His crime, you say, is that he turned a public event into an NDC campaign event. What is wrong with that? Well, I wouldn't call it a crime, but the point is that the shed was put up, according to our, our, our report, with funds from his share of the common, this assembly's common fund. So if this is a public, uh, uh, let's say, a, a, it, so it should have been a public event because it was put up by public resources. So he should have been there as a minister, but not there as a party functionary and calling on people to vote for the NDC. Well, I'm sure you know, I'm sure you know he has denied that. He says that event was not organized uh, and it was not organized based on the MP's common fund. He's demanding an apology, for example. The question is, what evidence do you have to back the allegations? This report has come from his constituency. As I said, we have our reporters, our observers in the 30 constituencies. People, they don't, the people do not know them. They do their, they get their, they attend political events and capture the reports. They have, they have cameras 
and they, 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 they have uh, uh, recorders. And where they are not sure, they are encouraged to go around and talk to a few people to verify and to confirm their, their, their reports. Where we are, we ourselves, having received the reports, have doubts. We also take steps to verify the reports. And, and what about what about the Akachi DCE? You mentioned his name in the report. What exactly did he do? Well, he he he, he delivered a thousand dual deaths to thirty-two schools. That were, the deaths were funded by the GET fund. He admitted that they were funded by the GET fund. But then, uh, in the course of the talk, they went ahead to say that look. They should vote for NDC. This shows that the NDC deserves a second term. And there were other public officials that were at the gathering. You see, when in our reports, we produce pictures where, there are, where, where we are able to take pictures. We produce names. We give the dates. We tell the events, the location, the venues of the, 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 the activities. And so we try as much as possible to provide enough information and to, 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 to justify our report. Mr. Sim, that's why we mention names. Mr. Sim, very quickly. Because we want to embarrass people. But we mention the names because we want to uh, establish the truth of the, 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 the reports. Very quickly, give me how of recommendations you put out today. What should we be doing about abuse of incumbency? Because really, it's not a new subject. Well, one is people should stop using their positions to, to, to electoral advantage giving gifts of high value to certain categories of people in the election, the period leading to the elections, even if that is not the actual uh, intention, it creates the perception that it's aimed at buying votes. And buying votes is not a good thing for our democracy. We talked about people separating state events from uh, party events. If you want to have a political rally, have your political rally funded by your party resources, and you tell them to vote for you, nobody has a problem with that. But you don't organize a state event funded by state resources and start calling on the people to vote for you. Thank you, sir, for your time here on Joy News at 8. That's the executive director of the Ghana Integrity Initiative. He is Vitus Azim, and uh, we will attempt to speak to the Akachi DCE, who you just heard uh, is also accused of some form of abuse of incumbency here on Joy News at 8. Well, in the meantime, we'll move on with some other stories. And the flag bearer of the new patriotic party, Nana Adudanko Akufuado, says his partnership with Dr. Bawumia is the solution to the economic challenges facing the country. He toured Ayawasu Central as he started his campaign in the run-up to December's general elections. Well, we'll bring you visuals of that story later, but um, we still have some other stories to look at. The People's National Convention and the Convention People's Party have also been reacting to President Mohammed's first address to the nation since assuming office on July 24. In the address, President Mahama, among other things, expressed gratitude to Ghanaians for the unity shown during the funeral of late Professor John Evans at a mills, urging all to help the transition the the transition the unity into the times ahead. The CPP and PNC, however, say being fresh in office, they didn't expect too much from the president in his first address to the nation. I think everything was in order. Um, again, um, in the course, he also called for some level of decorum in our politics. I believe strongly that um, the way we all, you know, mourn the president, the way we showered praises on his level of tolerance and accommodation, I think uh, it was virtually an admission that uh, we all strayed a little bit in our political discourse in the past. And uh, if this will trigger some kind of change in the way we approach our politics, I think it is, it will be in good, you know, uh, a, 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 you know, a step in the right direction. As a new president and being the first speech to the nation, we expect just we expected just something like that. So I think it was okay and it was all right. They have their expectation, however, and his fortnight address on the policy framework. Four months of a tenure of office is not that much, but 
if you really want to make something good out of it, you can really make something good out of it. So I expect that the president definitely knows that as a new president, it's a new law. And it's a new style of doing things. And if he's got any future for this country or any future that he wants to lead for in this country, then he'll come up with things that really the Ghanaian is suspecting. Direction. I don't know whether there's going to be a change in policy direction because already they have a policy. They have, uh, you know, they, they, their manifesto issue on, on, on the floor and they were pursuing it, the better Ghana agenda. I don't know whether he's going to drift away from it or it's a kind of emphasis that he's going to show. Um, I, 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 was, I couldn't get his drift properly. If he's now going to give a different line of you know, policy, uh, we are yet to see. Uh, however, I would like to see the president also trying hard to set example in his own camp. You know, if he's calling for decorum, uh, those who will stray in his, in his political party, who will go outside this, you know, realm to start attacking people's personalities, if he calls them to order, I think it will be the beginning of this. The two parties would want the public to hearken to the language of peace ahead of the general elections. The future is very bright. CPP is still working and we, are, we, we know that as our slogan says, Ghana must work or Ghana must be made to work. So we expect that they should all come on board and Ghana will be the better Ghana they've been expecting. We do this. Attacking personalities does not really help matters. Um, if decorum cannot even bring you votes, I can't see how insults can bring you votes. So let us do the things differently. The sub-region is seen as, as, you know, example to follow. Let them not see us doing this kind of thing to ourselves. Let them learn from us the best, the best things in politics. Now let's return to our earlier story where the Ghana Integrity Initiative is accusing government of abusing its incumbency. Also naming some state officials who are using state resources as a means to buy votes. One of the key individuals named in that report is the Akachi DCE, Peter Nochu. Thankfully, he joins me on the line. Thank you, sir, for your time here on Joe News at 8. Now, you are accused of taking advantage of some Get Fund sponsored projects to campaign for the NDC. Is that accurate? Uh, thank you and good evening. Uh, in the first place, uh, they are accusing me of uh, using that opportunity to campaign for NDC, uh, taking advantage of NQBC. Before we continue, I just want to say two things this so that you can be thinking about it. In 2008, we saw the picture of the presidential candidate of the MPP on a metro mass basis. I don't know if that can also be so. So, so, so what? Yeah, so, the same. Hold, hold, hold on, Mr. Nochu. Yes. If we saw uh, the pictures of the NPP presidential candidate in 2008 and it was wrong, we should repeat it in 2012? No, I, no, what I'm saying is, look at that picture also before I make my comment on the report by uh, Ghana Integrity Initiative. I'm just wondering what, what the point of that is, exactly. No, I just want to get uh, you a flashback of what happened some time ago. Okay, so I address... What you are talking, me, talking to me now. Okay, so address the yeah. issue in question now. Did you or did you not use some Get Fund uh, sponsored project as a basis to campaign for your party? Okay, thank you. In the first place, it was not a Get Farm project, it was a Minister of Education uh, project. Now, um, I presented uh, 1,000 dual decks to 32 basic schools in the district. And uh, if you know about the program of uh, this Better Ghana agenda, uh, one of the issues is providing infrastructure for schools. And it is part of the Ghana Better, Better Agenda that I did that. So it is now manifesto. And so once we have fulfilled our manifesto, I need to bring it to the notice of the people that this is the fulfillment made by the president. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, that yes. money you used in buying the desk, was it for the Ministry of Education or not? Uh, it was from the Ministry of Education. Is the Ministry of Education funded by the taxpayer? Yeah, it is funded by the taxpayer, but it's somebody's initiative. 
No, but is it funded by the taxpayer? You agree You agree to that. So it's not funded by the NDC government. It's funded by the state. And the state belongs to every individual, regardless of your party color. The point yeah, that GI is making is that it's uh, not proper to use an occasion like that to campaign for a party when we all fund that project. Well, I don't see anything wrong with it. Because if I am uh, telling the people that this is the promise the president made in our manifesto and we are delivering on it, I don't see what is wrong about it. Yeah, but all the same, I, if the Ghana Integrative uh, Initiative can also come out with how they got the information, because what they said in the news uh, was not what I actually said at the ceremony. Thank you, sir, for your time here on Joy News at 8. That's uh, Peter Nochu. He is the DCE for Akachi. The brief address to the nation given by President Dramani Mahama has generated different reactions from varying sectors of the economy. Matilda Nyakwa Dennis spoke to some members of parliament about their thoughts on yesterday's address by the new Ghanaian president. The maiden speech made by the president of this country is very reconciliatory. We all know that when you take over from your father, Normally, there might be some one or two frictions in the house. But when you come and you are a team player, you should be able to bring people together. And what I found from his speech is that he feels Ghanaians should come together, be united. And this country will go forward. Divergent views does not mean that what he said is not true. So as a father... You just tell your children what you feel you want to do for them, what you also expect from them. That is what I have seen about our new president. And therefore, he's a new father. Um, uh, president Mills was a peacemaker. So before then, we want the president to clean his house because he had some youth ministers, young ministers, who were all making uh, uh, some insulting people on radios and TVs, and that led him to become a president. So I hope that uh, he will clean up his house before coming to tell a lot of people that there, there might be peace. Yes, we want peace in Ghana. He gave hope and, and inspiration to the youth because really he wanted to motivate them to know that the future belongs to the youth of this country. I would therefore call on all Ghanaians to accept what he said. Let us come together. After all, he used the phrase that uh, House of Oak and Kotoko will be playing. But when it comes to Black Stars, we all support it. And that is Ghana. I belong to National Democratic Congress now. Some of them may belong to MPP. But even some of you can even observe it. When we are working in Parliament here, we work as brothers. Um, demanded a little bit more than what he said. Unfortunately, it was um, a bit more on the death of um, the late president at Mills. I needed the youth to be more energ uh, energetic. That is fine. But one thing that I would like to say about that assertion is that um, the youth need, needs employment. The youth needs to, um, a leader who can solve uh, the problems of the youth and particularly the unemployment situation that is raging in this country. And I believe that uh, it's something that he didn't dwell upon, he didn't touch at all. I would have thought he would have talked a little bit about the economic situation of the country. He promised us to deliver his economic policy in two weeks' time and let's hope that uh, that will contain a little bit more so that we can digest and see the way forward for this country. It was a mark of maturity. I mean, I really, I really enjoyed the speech yesterday. And uh, my prayer was uh, for him not to veer into politics. And he did just that. I mean, this is a message that, um, I mean, coming from, like, let's say, a day after... Um, I, I, yeah, an MPP press conference, people might have thought he will maybe veer into uh, politics, but he stood his ground because he wasn't out there to do politics. He was out there to give a message of hope.
to some people like us. You understand me? So I believe the message was full of hope for the future. And I believe he's, he's true, he's right. Some members of parliament from the minority side have expressed dissatisfaction with too many loans approved daily. Majority members, on the other hand, debanked the notion, saying the loans were crucial to the development of the nation. Now, the issue was raised on the last day for parliament to rise, stemmed from the fact that several loans facilities were approved today. The day's proceedings was characterized by a mixture of anger and laughter as Member of Parliament for Ahafwano South, Stephen Baladumenu, got up to express his opinion on the negative effects of approving several loan facilities. He said the loans being approved by Parliament were so much that he had named the Chairman of the Finance Committee Loans Chairman. When Minister for Water Resources E.T. Mensa asked him to withdraw such a statement since it was unconstitutional, this was his response. The French have a saying. The French have a saying. And it goes like this. Si un homme bat sa femme, chaque nuit s'en cause. Et si la femme ne se plaint pas, est-ce que l'homme a tort? What it means is that if a man beats the wife in the night without reason, and the woman does not complain, do we say the man is at fault? He is the person I've been calling chairman of committee on laws. Has he complained? He did not take kindly to a comment made by a member of parliament for Madina Abokobi, Amadou Sorogo, who challenged the authenticity of his French and wanted to prove him wrong at all costs. He, however, withdrew his comment, but not without jokingly referring to E.T. Mesa as a self-made financial solicitor. In further arguing the point of excess loan approvals by parliament in recent times, MP for Asawasi, Alaji Mohamed Muntaka, said, without loans, even the most developed countries will be far from developed. America takes loans to develop, to make things easier for the next generation to come. The things that we are doing, if you remember, he's a young man like myself, 20 years ago, Mr. Speaker, we didn't have internet connectivity running through even our country. Today, we have it and we are enhancing it through this facility to indicate that by the next generation, it is going to be better in terms of communication, in terms of connecting to each other. So the issue about uh, piling up loan for the future generation is neither here nor there. We are running a country, Honourable and member, that country Honourable must run. Member. MP for Chimam Punya, Isaac Kwame Siyama, added his voice to the debate. I want to ask this house, why this indecent haste of approving so many loans around this time? Let's be honest, no, let us be concerned. So far, let's be since we came, to, uh, this meeting, for example, speaker, about 25 loan agreements have been approved. Why are we rushing to? And the question is, why this indecent haste? Speaker, today, today, look to the other paper. About 15 loan agreements. Speaker, speaker, why are we rushing to? The loans for approval include an amount of 7.6 million euros to finance pedestrian bridges at the Hazardous Roads in Accra, 200 million US dollars to support infrastructural development in connection with cocoa production, and an amount of 78 million 880 thousand euros to finance the engineering design and construction of the Kwame Nkrumah interchange and other related ancillary works in Accra. Parliament rises today, August 16, until the second week of October, to enable them attend to their various constituencies. However, they will be called earlier to discuss issues relating to the creation of 45 new constituencies to determine whether it should be passed, a situation most parliamentarians are not happy about, since most of them are preparing for their individual campaigns. So now, the flag bearer of the new patriotic party, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, says his partnership with Dr. Baumia is the solution to the economic challenges facing the country. He toured Ayawaso Central as he started his campaign and the run up to the December's general elections. 
The tour started from the Malata Bogatanga community, where he reiterated on his promise of free secondary, technical, and vocational education to create more employment for the youth. According to Nana, the economic hardship being experienced by Guineans is due to the mismanagement of the economy, hence his choice for Dr. Baumia as his running mate. <laughs> The NPP parliamentary aspirant for Ayawaso Central, Henry Kwarte, also promised to build structures to accommodate the homeless. Nanado then continued his tour to the Malata daycare and nursery, where he donated 10 bags of rice and an undisclosed amount of money to the chief and people of the area as his contribution to the Ramadan celebration. The current MP for their constituency, Sheikh I.C. Kwe, said the solution to the challenges in the Zongos is the partnership of Nana and Baumia. He then continued to Kakumlemle old NDC office, where he urged the electorates to vote massively for the NPP. At the tiptoe lane, Nana then promised the traders that his government, when voted to power, will ensure stability of the city to enhance their business transaction. He, however, cautioned against electoral malpractice because the law will not spare any offender. The tour continues tomorrow at the Okankwe South constituency. Meanwhile, the people of Ayawaso Central are very hopeful Nanado will deliver on his promises. According to some of them, Nana's visit is a sign of good things to come. Nanadu was mocked by the people as he toured the area. Many indigents of the area struggled to catch a glimpse of Nanadu. Some traders left their wares unattended to, all in the name of seeing Nana. When I asked them how his visit meant to them, this was their response. Nana has come and visit us. I did not see Nana before, but today I've seen her face. Please, Ghana of uh, community of Ghana in Malata, please vote for Nana. Nana's presence in Ayaso Central constituencies brings a lot of morale and it brings empowerment to the youth. Of course, we see that Nana's choice for us MPP flag bearer race or even becoming the next president is one cardinal point that Ghanaians should all be looking at. This is the expectation of Nanado. Well, you may have your own expectations, but the reality is that political leaders have a lot to fulfill to the ordinary Ghanaian. President Mahama has told Castle staff that the Better Ghana agenda is still on track. He was officially introducing himself and the vice president, Emisa Arthur, to staff at the castle also. He urged them to put in their best in the coming months. He describes as critical to convince and make it possible to the people of Ghana. They have been working together over the past few tragic days, but today they met to be officially introduced to one another. President Mahama reminisced the last time they met there with Professor Mills as president. He reminded them of their crucial role in fully achieving the Better Ghana Agenda. The next few months are going to be very critical and I expect that you would put in even more than you have done in the last uh, three and a half years. There's a spirit of respect in the relationship between, between you and our late president and there was a spirit of respect in my relationship with you. I know that I can continue to count on that respect in our relationship. And we'll continue to do everything we can to motivate you so that you can continue to do the good work you're doing.
The vice president who had his first official assignment in Kumasi was introduced to the castle staff as the new team member. He was praised for his role in maintaining a stable macroeconomy. I know that you are professional and you will rise up to the occasion every time. So I, as the president said, I should say a few words because you have to go back to work. And uh, maybe later on, when I get to meet many more people, we'll be able to interact a lot more deeply. And, um, and I ask the Ghanaian people to pray for me in this uh, difficult assignment. I will not ask you to pray for me. I'll ask you to work hard for me so that I will succeed. The president said, despite the competition for resources from all governance sectors, he would ensure that staff at the castle work in an atmosphere that breeds utmost efficiency. Meanwhile, the National Thanksgiving Day instituted by Professor John Evans at Tamils will be maintained in the Emisa Arthur Mahama government. This was announced by the president when leadership and some members of the Women's Aglo Fellowship called on him at the castle today. The Ghana Women's Aglo International, with over 20,000 membership nationwide, has been at the forefront of the National Thanksgiving Day, interceding for government and the nation as a whole. It came as pleasant news to them when President Mahama gave the assurance of continuity. They brought their consolation and congratulations as well as encouragement for the president to face the task ahead. We assure you that for 19 years prayer, every believer is praying, but we have a covenant with God that every third Saturday we will pray for the nation and God has been faithful to us. So we assure you and the nation that we are going to pray. President Mahama said it is not by accident that Ghana remains one of the most peaceful nations in Africa. Neither is it that Ghana experienced the highest GDP rate in the world last year. We note the intercessory prayers, you say, across the country for not only the peace of this nation but for the progress of this nation. We can't take the peace we enjoy for granted or the progress we are making for granted. It is not by accident that Ghana continues to be one of the most peaceful and stable countries in, in West, not only in West Africa but in Africa. It's not by accident. It is by divine intervention and the fact that God's favor is upon the nation Ghana. They shared with him a prayer for policy direction for the agenda he has promised to release in two weeks. The group also blew a chauffeur with the significance of subduing all interfering spirits and bringing them into submission of Muhammad's presidency. Yeah. And government has declared next Monday, 20th August 2012, a public holiday. The Ministry of Interior on Thursday reminded the general public that Sunday, August 19, which marks the celebration of Adil Fitur, is a statutory public holiday and should be observed as such throughout the country. Well, a statement issued by Mr. William K. Abwa, Minister of the Interior, said, however, in view of the fact that August 19 fell on a Sunday, the president had, by an executive instrument, declared Monday, August 20, a public holiday to be observed as such. And thank you for staying with us here on John News at 8. Leftover items from donations made towards the funeral celebrations of late President Professor John Evans at Tamils have been donated to the vulnerable and needy in society. The Funeral Planning Committee this afternoon donated a number of items to orphanage homes as well as the chief imam in the capital. Numerous donations were made by institutions and individuals towards the funeral celebration of late President John Evans Santa Mills. The items were to be served to people during the funeral, but the funeral planning committee could not use all and decided to give the rest away. Briefing the media, Deputy Local Government Minister and member of the funeral planning committee, Elvis Efriye Ankara, said it has become necessary to donate the rest of the items to the less fortunate in the society. The rationale behind this is that we know that our president, even when he was alive, he usually gave his salary and donations to such institutions, such as the Osu Children's Home. And um, even on his birthday, he gave donations to um, other institutions. So after all, it is his funeral. And if we've had donations and the funeral is over, then there are leftovers. I will believe that his spirits 
would agree with us that this is the right thing to do, that we give to these institutions that are made up of vulnerable and needy and challenged people in our society. The Osu Children's Home, Help Age Ghana, Legend Village, Weja Leprosarium, School for the Blind, Ekripon, and Joulu Special School were the beneficiary institutions. After the press briefing, the minister led a delegation to the Help Age Day Center to donate some of the items to the inmates. Receiving the items on behalf of the home, Rose Saka awarded express gratitude for the kind gesture by the committee. At the Osu Children's Home, the committee also donated some of the items for the upkeep of the children. Managers Sharon Abbey received the items on behalf of the home. We are very happy and grateful for you remembering us at this time for this wonderful show of love. We hope that you continue, even after the funeral, to remember us in your prayers, your prayers and continue to support us. And I'm also appealing to other corporate organizations to emulate your example to come to the aid of the vulnerable in society. The delegation then proceeded to the home of the chief imam to thank him for the enormous prayers and contribution during the late president's funeral. The committee also donated some items to the chief imam for the Salah celebration. Even though the funeral celebration is over, more donations still keep pouring in as the Ghana National Petroleum Tankers Drivers Union has donated 1,000 Ghana CDs to the committee. Hello, welcome to Business with me, Matilda Nyakwandenis. Now, for our first story today, barring any last-minute changes, the Bank of Ghana is set to roll out its new 50 Ghana CD note on Tuesday, August 21, as announced by the Central Bank. Joy News went out to find out from Ghanaians if they have knowledge of this new note and as well as its features. The upgraded CD note has new set of features different from the existing one. Acting Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Kofi Wampa, disclosed the release will be on Tuesday, 21st of August, 2012. He was addressing pressmen at a media soiree organized by the Journalists for Business Advocacy here in Accra. I also want to use this opportunity to tell you that next week, uh, precisely on Tuesday, we would be launching the new 50 CD note. Uh, I'm sure you've heard it on uh, the uh, media, both uh, uh, electronic and print media, uh, that the, these notes are going to be introduced soon. And uh, we've set Tuesdays as the date on which we would be launching uh, the note. With such little time to launch, it is unclear how educated the public is on the introduction of the notes. While some members of the public who interacted with business life were aware, others simply had no idea. For some who have not seen or heard of the new CD notes, they explained how they will identify an original CD note. I, I will cross-check from my friends whether it's genuine. By all means, there will be some people around, so I can ask. I will continue to ask whether it's genuine or not. Oh, I not Welcome, Wunoke. When you knock at Lyangma, Sky, me, again, I get Papa. 
se bi an hyen so de na ewo mu no e bi akala na ewo scan me yebese sa no na yama different color e na be ma me hu se scan ya se sa no inti no new one ni e na old one with such confidence we decided to tease them with a specimen they were eager to identify the features that differentiate the new cd from the existing one and we have the uh, seal here that's the first thing i can see this is from um emisata and this is from i think um dufo or oh. The green cocoa pot spark, which will replace the silver hologram patch on the right corner of the notes, the signature of a misatha, are the obvious features Ghanaians should look out for on the new CD notes. The release of the new notes is expected to curb the circulation of counterfeit notes in the system. So away from the 50 Ghana City notes there, work on the National Gas Project is progressing steadily as the Ghana National Gas Company has received its second consignment of pipelines for the construction of a 110-kilometer pipeline. Now, the pipelines will transport proce processed gas from Atwabo in the Elembele district to Abwazi. The second consignment, which was inspected by the CEO of Ghana Gas, Dr. George Sipa Yankee, has on board about 6,953 pipes, which are being dispatched to the various 11 temporal storage sites in the region. The first phase of the project, which is expected to be completed by the end of the year, involves the laying of pipes from Echiabo to Abwazi, which is about 110 kilometers and is also expected to produce a gas capacity of about 150 million standard cubic feet per day. The first consignment was of a 20-inch line pipe measuring 30 kilometers in total, while the second consignment involves 80 kilometers. Addressing the media, Ghana Gas CEO George Sipa Yankee reiterated his outfit's commitment to complete the first phase of the project by the end of the year and also assured that everything was on course towards a successful modern state-of-the-art project. The project has three components. We have got the engineering uh, component that is fit the front end engineering design. Then we've got the procurement and then the construction. As I speak to you right now, we've finished basically almost everything to do with the feed, the first phase, that is the front end engineering design. It's completed more or less. Now, so far as procurement is concerned, it's also completed. That's why we see uh, pipes you know, being, being discharged at the port right now. We are very confident that uh, work will start in earnest soon. Hopefully, uh, by the end of the year, So on that note, we end the business segment, but up next we have Smart Investment, and after that, we bring you some exciting entertainment news.
Rashida Kadiri. Good evening. Time now for the latest in the world of sports. The Ghana Football Association, the GFA, has reached a cooperation deal with their Chinese counterparts to further develop football in both countries. The deal was reached on Wednesday when the Chinese Football Association leaders met GFA officials led by President Kwesi Nyantichi in Xinyan. Under the pact, the GFA will support China in developing their youth football, while the Asians, who are giants in women's football in the world, will help Ghana boost the female game. Coaches, referees and administrators will also be involved in the agreement as both countries will exchange experiences to seek to develop the game in both countries. China held Ghana to a 1-1 draw in a friendly played in Xinyan on Wednesday night. On the continent, a 30-man delegation consisting of players and officials of six-time CAF Champions League winners Al Ali arrived in Accra earlier today ahead of a second-leg encounter with Ghana's sole campaigners, Brekun Chelsea. Joy Sports met the team on arrival at the Kotoka International Airport. Chelsea lost 4-1 in the first leg, played at the Cairo International Stadium a fortnight ago and must do well to score three or more unanswered goals in order to progress to the next stage of the CAF Champions League. Coach of the six-time champions, Hossam El Badri, believes Chelsea is a very tough side, but remains optimistic his team will surmount the hurdle come Sunday. I think Chelsea is a good team, but Al Ahli is also a good team with good expert players and the chances for Al Ahli are, um, are good. Is playing with um, uh, calm, and um, uh, we are in need for one point. Or uh, if if we earn the three points, it's a good chance to be the leader of the group. Huh? Which of the Ali played the first leg without key players Mohamed Abutrika, Ahmed Fassi, and Ahmed Shehab, who represented Egypt at the Olympic Games in London. The three make a return for Ali this Sunday at the Akaspa Stadium, and defender Ahmed Fassi admits their return will lift their game. He's a very good player, uh, very intelligent. Uh, I think he's make a good tournament in, uh, with the Olympic team. Uh, you give experience for the, the player. Only this. Still on the same subject, Egyptian giants Al Ali have rejected a hotel and training facility offered them by hosts Brecon Chelsea ahead of their second leg half Champions League tie. The North African side have opted to pay for the accommodation and training center during their four day stay in Ghana. Officials of the six-time African champions say the Lincoln Hotel that was offered them by their hosts, Brekum Chelsea, is far below the four-star standard acceptable by continental football governing body, CAF. They rejected it on arrival, opting for another hotel. Esam Aboud Esisi is a deputy commissioner at the Egyptian embassy here in Ghana. When Chelsea went to Cairo, Ali gave them a four-star hotel, match the standards of the CAF. And the agreement was that Chelsea, when they come to Accra, Chelsea will give them the same everything. No. But two days before Ali arrived, they, they sent to Chelsea to ask about the venues that they will offer, the, the, the training venue and the hotel. And they told us it will be an Lincoln Hotel. And when we checked this hotel, we found it very poor hotel that doesn't match the same standards that Ali really offered. Ali also requested through Brookham Chelsea to train at the Lizzy Sports Complex, but that request was turned down with the Ghana side offering their visitors the Presec Park in Ligon. The choice of the training center was met with displeasure, with the North Africans securing another venue. Even Ali asked them to, to offer the Lincoln, uh, the busy uh, Lizzy uh, Sports Complex to train in. Chelsea told us no, it's not available. So Ali decided to do everything and uh, tomorrow in the meeting with the CAF commissioners they will appeal against everything and they will uh, show the documents that already Chelsea officials signed in Cairo admitting that what everything they got there. Chelsea will need to overturn a 4-1 deficit they suffered in the first leg in order to progress to the quarterfinals of the continental competition. 
Continental News follows afterwards. I am down with sports. Good evening. Now, just before we go ahead of the December polls, chiefs have been urged to be bold and address issues that threaten peace in the country. President of the National House of Chiefs, now Professor John Anabella, says chiefs should not underestimate their power in ensuring peace and tranquility. Professor Nabila was speaking at a lecture held by the Institute of Democratic Governance here in Accra. Colonization. Chiefs played the total role of governors in towns and villages. Chiefs were and are still the sign of authority within their community. Their powers can be likened to the executive, legislative and judiciary of modern times because they made laws, implemented them and settled disputes in order to maintain peace and unity. Even though people give government officials the respect due them, they also respect their chiefs because they live in the community with them and so can relate to them better. But Professor Nabila says this respect is earned and not given freely. Ghanaians have such great respect, in some instances almost bordering on reverence for chiefs, that what the chief tells his people is in many cases in instinctively obeyed. This is largely due to the fact that traditional authority derives its strength from the clan or ethnic origin and almost invariably the chief lives with the people in their various communities. Realizing the roles chiefs play in ensuring peace and unity, Professor Nabila in his speech titled Chieftaincy, Peace and Unity in National Challenge stressed on the need for chiefs to help maintain peace before, during and after the election. He says the youth also play a critical role and are an essential tool in peacekeeping. Youth have visibly been left out unless it is about negative use of power. And here I'm referring to where they are used as cannon fodder. They are used either as macho men or to go and disrupt elections. While male chiefs play the fatherly role, females also play the motherly role. Nana Kofi Abona is a female chief and says they also have a role to play in ensuring peace in the country. We are not saying that we'll take the mantle from the men because in the Bible it says that the head of the house is the man, but the women are the helper mates. So definitely if we are working with the men, we are not saying we'll take their powers from them, but we want them to recognize us so that we shall be part of the decision making on that field. And already you know, women, we care for the house. So if they are liars there, we will do and do it better for them. The president of the National House of Chiefs, however, appealed to the media to be objective and circumspect in their reportage and also called on Ghanaians to continuously show maturity and decorum as they did during the morning of Professor John Evans at a mills. And that's how we end your news at eight. Thank you very much for your company. My name is Evans Mensah. And I am Kemini Nyamani Amano.